Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and it's Christmas Day 2023 and I thought we should probably look at who's top of the Midnight Mule Mini League for Christmas Day and also who did well for Game Week 18 and what my plans are for Game Week 19. In Game Week 18 we had two teams managing 74 points. The first was Nick Bartlett with Beckham's Razor, 74 points. They had Solanke for 17, Sun Captain 14, Bowen 8, Ariola 8, Richarlison 8, Salah 7, Trent 5. And on the bench they had another 11 points. But lots of people had Archer on the bench so that kind of doesn't really matter. Also on 74 points, and apologies for getting the name wrong almost certainly, Nguyen Thang with Rashi, 74 points. They had Solanke 17, Captain Salah 14, Sun 7, Trent 5, and that's all. So you may be thinking that's not 74 points and you'd be right. There were 18 points on the bench and they played their bench boost. And I reckon if you get 16 from your bench boost, it was worth doing. So I think that was definitely worth doing. And they can now make their bench a little bit cheaper and spend their funds on their main 11 players. So in my estimation, and what do I know, I think that was probably worth doing. Top of the league is B Verb Kurt. And I'm sorry I would have got that wrong as well. B Verberkt. That's probably better. With Giga Chad FC. They got 62 points. They're currently on 1162. And I think probably the top six in our league at the moment are better than any of the content creators. And they managed that with Solanke on 17, Bowen on 8, Captain Sun 14, Salah 7, Trent 5. And on their bench, they actually had 20 points. So that was unfortunate, but I'm aware of quite a lot of people left points on the bench this week, so it was pretty standard this week. As for me, I'm down in 144th. There I am, I got 51 points, and I got my transfer wrong. I took out Ariola because I thought he's not going to play anymore, and he got 8 points. I bought in Dubravka, who got 3. So that was worth minus 5 in total, so not so clever there. I had Solanke for 17, apart from that Salah and Sun got 7, Trent 5 and that's all. But at least I got my bench right, I didn't leave any significant points on the bench so I always feel good when my bench is not so good. <laughs> so 51 points in total, game week ranked just outside the 1.5 million. So a small green arrow, overall ranking 660-ish thousand. So I'm now 9 points the wrong side of half a million rank. And more importantly, I'm 187 from top spot. So if I can get 10 points a week more than top spot between now and the end of the season, I'll finish top. So that, that can be my goal. 1,111 subscribers to this channel. Thank you very much to everyone who has subscribed. Thank you to everyone who leaves comments and likes. And especially thank you to everyone who watches these videos. So on the FBL Game Week website, you can look at the content creators, see how they're doing. And for the ones that I regularly watch, FPL Fran's doing the best. He's currently on 1,096, which is slightly higher than FPL Nymphrea on 1,089. As for me, I'd be all the way down in 50th. There I am on 1025, which is three points worse than Ross, FPL Raptor. You may be familiar with him. And he's currently lamenting his season, saying how bad he's doing. But he's doing better than me. And he's 14 worse off than FPL Mate, who has the same score as Holly Shand. You may know some of them. So my transfer plans for game week 19, I've already taken a minus four. As you may well know, Arsenal have got some very nice fixtures coming up, so we should really be concentrating on getting an Arsenal players. So what have I done? I've sold an Arsenal player. I'm selling Ben White, who's a very attacking defender. I do like him a lot. However, he is a bit expensive, and my plan was always to sell him for somebody cheaper. So a few weeks ago, I brought in Saliba, and I'm finally offloading White and I'm getting Senesi from Bournemouth. And then one of my players that I've had a problem with, unhealthy relationship perhaps, is Jao Pedro, because I really like Jao Pedro, and every week I feel a bit torn because I put him on my bench, but I want to play him because I think he could get a good score. Maybe this week he's going to get a really, really good score. And he never does. He plays every game week. He never plays 90 minutes though. So it's finally time to offload him, and I'm buying Nkunku. The idea behind this is Chelsea have got some nice fixtures. Obviously Palmer's out, Sterling's out. I think he's got a reasonable chance of getting a return in the next two, three, four game weeks. 
in which case I think lots of managers are going to buy him. So his price is going to go up. And I suspect because of people have to offload Sun and Salah perhaps, bring in Haaland, managers are going to have to take a hit to bring him in. I'm just taking the hit early. So that's pretty much the gamble. If he's a flop, like most Chelsea strikers are, then obviously this was a bad move, but we'll see how it goes. So the way my team's lining up for game week 19, I have Salah, he's captain, he gets to wear the old mule hat away to Burnley with his mate Trent. Vice captain is Saka at home to West Ham with his mate Saliba. I have Trippier at home to Forest with his mate Dubravka. I generally don't like playing two people from the same team at the back because when the clean sheet goes, that's it, points wiped out. But I kind of haven't got a choice this week, not a sensible choice anyway. I have Nkunku away. I have Nkunku at home to Palace. I have Solanke at home to Fulham. And then I've got Sun and his mate Porro away to Brighton. And I've got Watkins away to Man United. And then on my bench, I have Sanchez. He's taking a few weeks off, taking it easy. Palmer, very cleverly, got his fifth yellow card for the Christmas weekend. So he gets a few days off. And then Senesi at home to Fulham. He chan away to Brentford. If either of those come on, I'm absolutely fine with that. And in case you're wondering about the background picture, the first team we talked about today was Beckham's Razor, which I assume is a bit of a pun on Occam's Razor. Occam's Razor is about when you're presented with more than one possibility, you should take the simplest choice, the least complex choice. So the way you could apply that to FPL, if there are two players you're thinking of bringing in and you don't know which one to bring in, you should probably bring in the player that's got the highest ownership. Because if you get it wrong, that's the one that's going to hurt you the least. And there we have it. What happened in game week 18? Who stopped for Christmas? And what I've done for game week 19? Hopefully I get away with it, but we'll see. I hope you have a very good boxing day for the football. And I hope I do too. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. <laughs>